Okay, so we're here with Jeff Gadway from RIM, and we are uh, looking at Playbook 2.0. So Jeff, uh, what's, what's new and awesome with Playbook 2.0? Yeah, so um, you know, Playbook OS 2.0 really focuses uh, on three kind of key areas of the Playbook experience. Uh, messaging, um, apps and content, and uh, business and productivity, right? And then uh, I guess a, a, a fourth really would be you know, how your BlackBerry smartphone and your Playbook work together um, as, a, as kind of a powerful pair. So I really want to focus on uh, the communication stuff, share some of that with you, as well as some of that cool bridge stuff. Um, and uh, you know, there's lots more, but um, in the sake of time, Sure. Dive right in. First thing um, that users will notice is that there's a built-in messages application, and I mean this is about more than just email. So yeah, you've got your personal and work email here. So I've got my RIM account. I've also got my Gmail account coming to the coming to the tablet um, and synchronizing with all my other devices. Um, but I've also got integrated in here my Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, you can probably see that on the last page better. Um, so I can get all my LinkedIn direct messages as well as my Twitter direct messages. And we're working with many of the other popular social networks working uh, platforms as well, and, and they'll be in here at launch, um, but uh, we're just previewing these two uh, at the show. So what that means is that I can actually send a direct tweet, right? So if I wanted to send um, a direct tweet to my buddy uh, to my buddy Mike Cluley, I can say, hey, um, and there you get a little preview of the uh, the new keyboard, which we'll talk about more in a second. Awesome. Um, but I can do that right from within the inbox. So our focus is on delivering a unified communications experience as opposed to users having to go to a variety of different applications for all their different messaging. Um, when it comes to uh, composing messages, uh, we've got uh, full rich text support here, so fonts, formatting, um, color, all, all that stuff. And we've also built in a brand new virtual keyboard, and this is really cool. So if I start typing, it's also got, um, you know, in addition to uh, autocorrect, it's got um, contextual next word prediction. So I can say, hey, guys, and then um, we are looking forward to seeing you all soon. So I just typed a whole sentence without actually typing anything, right? So that's just a testament to you know how strong this virtual keyboard is. Um, but in addition to that uh, contextual next word prediction stuff, we've also incorporated a few features that um, our existing BlackBerry users will really come to appreciate. So things like auto contractions, right? So if I type can't, it automatically uh, inserts um, an apostrophe there because uh, no, we know that that's a contraction. The other thing that we also that we're uh, doing with this keyboard is if I hit a, a space bar twice, um, it inserts a period of space and capitalizes, you know, the next letter. And that's something that BlackBerry has done for a long time, and that um, you know users have come to appreciate for just how it uh, allows them to save time and and uh, and communicate more effectively. That's great. Uh, can you turn it on uh, into portrait mode and, and show us? Uh, the virtual keyboard in, in that uh, orientation. Sure. So, I, you know what, I actually think in this particular build of, uh, of OS 2.0 that we're showcasing here, we don't have uh, portrait enabled. Okay. Um, but um, what I can do is is back out of here and turn the whole tablet into portrait mode and bring up the um, bring up the keyboard. Okay. So you can see, I mean, this is actually a keyboard that you can thumb. And right. That's, that's what I wanted to show is that you know the seven inch screen size is probably really well suited for this for the portrait mode keyboard. There you go. So that's that's a quick look at the messages application. Um, what I want to show you now is the contacts application, and what we've done here is provided users with a really robust um, contacts app built in um, that seamlessly draws in all your contacts from um, all the different accounts you've configured. So I can go in here when I set up the, play, the playbook with OS 2.0, and I can add uh, different accounts. So I've got my you know my Gmail, I've got my work email, I've got my uh, Twitter and LinkedIn, and that's automatically going to go out and pull in all the contact information from those accounts. But taking it one step further, it's going to intelligently merge those things. So I've got, um, you know, uh, picking on Mike again, I've got Mike in a number of different um, number of different networks. I've got him on Twitter, I've got him in my corporate address book, I've also got him on LinkedIn. And so what Playbook OS 2.0 does is puts all those pieces together and provides me with one 360 degree view of Mike. And it's always up to date. So I can get Mike's latest status updates just by tapping on the status tab. I can get the uh, latest information about Mike's employer um, pulling in information through GIST, which is an acquisition that we made uh, right. last year. I can see the, um, the past and upcoming meetings that I've got with Mike um, just by, you know, 
uh, tapping on the uh, calendar piece here, and I can also go in and see LinkedIn connections that we have together and shared contacts. So people that um, we both have on our calendar or in our address book, um, we can see you know who we uh, who we share contacts with. So again, the premise here was to build um, a built-in contacts application focused on relationships um, versus just you know a Rolodex where you right. store information. And we've taken that social integration and woven it into the built-in calendar application as well. So you're able to manage multiple calendars here through one view. I can toggle on and off um, and layer on and off uh, different calendars. So here I've got my, again, all of those calendars associated with the accounts that I showed you that I had integrated. And a really neat feature that we've built in is something that we're kind of uh, playfully calling growing numbers. So you'll notice that the numbers associated with different days are different sizes and that corresponds to how busy I am on a particular day. So um, the three here is a little bit bigger than the one and that's because on the first, I didn't have anything going on, right? right? Um, I think it's gonna say uh, pay rent and um, something else. Well, it's a good thing you're, uh, you're on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The other thing that we're doing in the in the calendar is um, extending that social integration with something that we're calling a people view. So I'm able to come in here and looks like I might have dropped Wi-Fi. So I'm not sure if it's going to uh, to work exactly as I'd hope. But um, in addition to having an agenda view of your day and uh, and a more traditional day view, right. I'm able to kind of toggle on this people view. And what you would see down the right hand side here is a list similar to this mm -hmm. of all of the people that are on my calendar for a given day. Yeah. So I'm able to you know wake up in the morning, go to a particular day, turn on people view, and see you know who am I going to be interacting with over the course of a day, and be able to get information about them. You know, so I walk into a meeting with Mike, and uh, and I can I can know exactly what's going on with Mike and, and what's up. So you know if he's in a bad mood or something, and you you need to avoid him or. Uh... Something like that. Is there um, potential for third-party integration with that social networking aspect? That's a really great question, and, and I'm not 100% sure of um, you know what APIs we're exposing exactly. Okay. Um, I mean, we've always been a, a large proponent of, of um, you know an, an open approach um, and and deep integration with applications. So um, you know we can follow up on that one for sure. But um, you know we are making a lot of APIs available to developers um, to d deliver some really powerful experience. Um, one of the things that we're doing, um, uh, what was I, I going to say? I wanted to show you uh, some bridge stuff, but I, I thought there was a connection with the developer message. We can come back to that one. Um, one of the things that we're doing, as I said at the onset, was helping your BlackBerry smartphone and your tablet work better together. And we're doing that through an application that we call BlackBerry Bridge. So if I go in here and I launch Bridge, I've got my playbook, and you can see that it's already connected through Bluetooth. But I can actually go a step further and enable what we're calling remote control. So this allows me to use the touch screen on my smartphone, including you know, all of the bezel gestures that you have on Playbook. You're able to use your smartphone to remote control your Playbook. So if I was sitting on the couch with my Playbook plugged into my TV, I could play a movie or I could you know, go onto the browser and uh, come in here, open a new tab, and go to a, go to a website, right? You can even come in here and if you wanted to, you can type in um, you can see how so you can see here that he's not even touching the playbook screen at all this is all done through the blackberry yeah I mean this could be great for if you're composing a long email or you're um, editing a document um, you know you can be using the blackberry's QWERTY keyboard to, uh, to to input text into the into the uh, into the playbook right and then go back and do the rich editing on the playbook exactly something else that's really cool about um, about this bridge feature is um, what what, uh, what we're calling uh, open on playbook and what that allows you to do is kind of choose the right tool for the task and so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find um, I'm going to go in here to a picture, right? I've got a, I've got a picture on my smartphone that I want to um, you know, share with friends on the playbook. I can uh, come in here and say open on playbook. What that's going to do is seamlessly open you know, the correct application and put the content uh, right on the, playbooks, on the playbook screen. And so this open on capability, um, keep in mind this is a, this is a, a, giant, uh, a, a giant, giant, uh, giant photo that I took with an SLR. So okay. um, it's going to take a minute to transfer. And this is going over Bluetooth? This is going over Bluetooth. Right. Um, uh, just while we're waiting, how far back does play, does the bridge um, allow? Like, how many generations back? Can we be using this on a BlackBerry 8100? Um, 
or is it? I'm not. I'm not sure 8100 specifically, but I mean, I know that Bridge is supported with any BlackBerry smartphone running OS 5 or newer. Or, okay. So okay. Um, we've had a lot of iterations of, uh, of, sure. of, of of smartphones since OS 5. So I mean, I, I think the majority of BlackBerry smartphone users out there today will be able to take advantage of all this Bridge Bridge functionality. That's great. So um, here's a picture from when uh, the uh, the Queen visited the uh, the Rim uh, Global headquarters um, a couple cool. years ago. So I'm able to take these. I'm able to open them on Playbook. And these are uh, these are slightly smaller photos, so they render a, a, a whole lot quicker. Um, but you know, this same bridge function, the same bridge functionality gets extended to music, to videos, to uh, emails, to attachments. So if I were to receive, um, you know, a spreadsheet from uh, a colleague on my on my smartphone as an email attachment, I could open that on Playbook and use the Playbook um, for you know editing of uh, of that of that uh, of that attachment. And when I resave it, it saves it to uh, saves it to the smartphone. That's very very cool. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the last thing we wanted to look at was uh, just a little bit of that new uh, editing capability that uh, sure. comes with Playbook 2.0. In addition to the uh, folders, can you just show us kind of the, the folders that uh, have been integrated? I think so, everybody knows about that. But yeah, so I mean, cool. I've created a bunch of folders here to help uh, to help organize all the applications that we're showcasing here at CES. Um, but creating folders is really simple. I mean, it's it's as easy as taking you know one icon and dropping it onto another, and then being able to customize the name for that folder. So I can create that folder, go into the folder, and if I want to change the name, I can just touch and hold on the uh, on the folder name itself. On the folder name, and then if I want to delete that folder. And just do that, and it populates everything back to the home screen. Very One nice. of the other things that we've done with the uh, user interface is incorporated this application dock. So this is completely customizable, and you can have as many or as as few apps in here as you want. So this, I mean, just allows you to put those applications that you use most commonly mm -hmm. right at your fingertips. Okay, great. So uh, we're opening uh, the documents editor. Yeah. So we've we've made a bunch of improvements to uh, all three of the um, all three of the applications in the Docs to Go productivity suite. Um, in uh, in Word to Go, um, we've incorporated a lot more um, formatting and and, um, and, uh, and and editing functionality um, that allow you to to use this you know as as a real. Uh, Word processing solution, and keep in mind this is completely compatible with um, with Microsoft Office. So um, anything that you uh, that you uh, receive as an email attachment, you can you can work with on here. And we've built this from the ground up as a, uh, as, a as a mobile productivity solution. So this hasn't been scaled down from a desktop. This has been built uh, from the ground up um, as a tablet uh, as a tablet productivity suite. In the uh, the Sheets to Go application, we've incorporated a lot more um, functionality, and I mean that um, both literally and figuratively. Um, so there's over a hundred functions that you can use. So this is a really powerful um, spreadsheet application. You're also able to um, copy and paste between cells, which is a new feature. Um, and uh, I don't have a, a, a document on here, unfortunately, to show you. But um, if I had a document that I opened up um, in uh, in Sheets to Go that had a, a chart in it, so I have some some data here with some numbers, and then it's represented as a chart. If I change the, the numbers here in the cell, right? Um, I could put in whatever. If I change the number here in the cell. It's going to actually dynamically update that chart that I have on the screen. So um, if I'm, you know, adjusting a sales presentation, I can do that. And then finally, I don't have any PowerPoint presentations to sh to, uh, to demonstrate this with, um, but uh, you know, we've also um, improved the editing functionality in PowerPoint to go, as well as incorporated some new uh, presentation mode capabilities. So okay. you can receive a PowerPoint presentation, edit it, plug it in through HDMI, and present that in full 1080p on a on a large screen. And this is fully compatible with Bluetooth keyboards? Absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I can't say definitively that it works with all Bluetooth keyboards, but um, I've seen a number of, um, of Bluetooth keyboards uh, that work really well with Playbook, you know, in addition to being able to use your BlackBerry smartphone keyboard now, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yep, that's a great addition. Uh, so lastly, if you're not doing any uh, work, uh, what about some fun? That's a, that's, a, that's a good one. I mean, you know, we recognize that uh, you know th that a great tablet has to be able to meet uh, both you know personal and pro productivity requirements, right? Yep. 
um, you can't have one without the other. So here at CES, we're showcasing a ton of the great applications that you can get on uh, on the BlackBerry Playbook. I mean, we've got just a, a slew of games um, from partners like EA Games, um, partners like uh, like Rovio. You probably saw you know the Angry Birds folder I made yep. on the home screen here. Um, Cut the Rope. We just introduced this week here at CES. We're previewing it. Um, some other great applications like um, where is uh, reading? Um, we've got Zinio, which uh, gives you access to you know tons and tons of online publications. Um, Playbook comes um, you know with uh, built-in Kobo Kobo uh, Kobo e-reader, yep. um, and because it's you know. Um, about the size of a trade paperback, it's great for e-reading. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of different applications that meet, you know, kind of any different need or lifestyle, or can help you address any moment that comes up. You know, whether it's um, you know kicking back on a on a flight um, with the new video store, that's something that um, you know we've incorporated into Sudado as well. Or you know, being productive with things like Vox.net or Evernote or uh, you know something like uh, SAP or Citrix. You know, we've got it all covered. Very cool. Thanks so much, Jeff. This has just been a not so brief, but very comprehensive look at the upcoming Playbook 2.0 software. Thanks again. You're welcome. So uh, we're back with Jeff. We just wanted to look at the Android player integration with Playbook 2.0. Uh, unlike some people's impressions, there's no separate app store. That's correct. Right? You're getting this all. You're getting all your Android player applications from the App World. That's right. So app, BlackBerry App World storefront is your kind of one-stop shop for all kinds of BlackBerry apps, whether it's written in HTML5 or native or uh, Flash or Android. Now, yep. um, you know that's where you go to get your uh, to get all your apps. Um, just for the sake of demoing here at CES, I have broken the Android apps out into a separate folder using the, the foldering functionality we took a look at earlier, and I'm just going to show you, um, you know, how well these Android apps play here on the Playbook. I don't know why I'm playing Crokino. I've never done this <laughs> one before, but um, this is just, you know, a, a simple game um, that you can play. Um, you know, it is an Android app. But it runs, you know, just like any other application. It's in a window. Um, you can see, you know, faintly the Chrome of the Android player, and you can you can uh, jump between Android applications in within, the within within the player, the player itself, right? So all of your Android apps run within the player, um, but you do still have a multitasking experience, being able to to switch between them. And is it going to allow for paid Android apps as well? You know what? That's a great question. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think we could. Uh, we could talk to uh, one of the people from our uh, from our um, our App World team. Because okay. um, I'm not 100% sure uh, uh, of, of how exactly uh, you know we're we're working with uh, Android developers. Um, what I do know is that we're giving Android devs uh, a lot of tools um, to be able to port their applications over quickly to uh, to the Playbook platform. So what I what I did there was um, I just used a little gesture to uh, get from you know. Uh, a live Android application um, back to like a recent application's um, just flipping your finger from just the by, bottom, just a little diagonal okay. cross gesture across the bottom corner, um, and that it, and that enables me to you know kind of quickly go back to uh, my recent Android apps. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome.